Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 6th of July 2011. As we're going to spend a bit of time on the comet that I mentioned in the breaking news item that I posted yesterday, perhaps the trivia question should be about comets. Comets have three different types of tails. A dust tail, a gas tail, and an iron tail. Which of these always points directly away from the Sun? The answer will be given at the end. Now let's take a look and see what happened to that comet. The comet first became visible at about 1900 hours on the 4th of July and we were able to follow it for nearly a day using the SOHO LASCO C3 coronagraph. Before the observations were interrupted by one of those annoying data gaps, the C2 instrument caught it in the edge of the field of view. Here I've plotted the position of the comet over the time that we observed it. You can see that the points are getting further and further apart as it approaches the Sun, which means it's accelerating as it should do. Now let's take a look at the videos of the comet's approach. First the C3 instrument, which is the one with the largest field of view, then the smaller field of view C2 instrument. Now the question that if the comet were to hit the Sun, would it be hitting the front side of the Sun nearest the Earth, or the back side of the Sun away from the Earth? To look at that we have to go to the stereo data, and for this case I'm going to use the stereo A data which in these images makes the Earth be on the left, so it will be hitting the back side of the Sun. I hope you'll notice that because there are three repeats, it looks as though the comet is causing a coronal mass ejection, but if you look carefully, the coronal mass ejection occurs at the beginning of the sequence, not at the end. So the next question is, did it survive? Here I've extrapolated the points to see when it would have hit the Sun or when it would have come out the other side. So it would have hit the Sun sometime before midnight yesterday, and certainly would have re-emerged before 6 UT today. And that didn't happen, so obviously this comet did not survive. It's worth remembering that often when there's one comet coming in, there's a whole group. It's rather like deer and cockroaches. When you see one, there's probably a lot. From the GOES X-ray plot, we see that we've had no major flares in the last 24 or 48 hours for that matter, just a few small B flares. So solar flare activity is very quiet at the moment. The reason continues to be the lack of large and dynamic sunspot regions on the disk. Region 1244 is rotating off the west limb and will be probably gone by tomorrow. Region 1243 is relatively stable. There is a small spot group in the southeast which hasn't been numbered yet. I think somebody's asleep at the wheel. None of these are rapidly growing or dynamic sunspot regions with strong magnetic fields. So we can't realistically expect any major flaring at the moment. The sunspot and magnetic movies from the HMI instrument on the SDO spacecraft show the relatively passive nature of the magnetic sun at the moment. The whole eastern half of the sun is devoid of any major regions. Now we get a better view of the region in the southeast, we see that it is not particularly spectacular either. The transition region and coronal movies from the AIA instrument on SDO are not much more promising. We can see some activity in the prominences around the limb on the transition region movie and the filament above region 1244 looks as though it's about to lift off so we should keep an eye on that for the next couple of days. In the high temperature coronal movie I'd like you to keep an eye out for the x-ray bright points that keep coming and going continuously throughout this 48 hour period. They're particularly easy to see in the coronal hole near the disk centre. These are in effect mini active regions. You've already seen the coronagraph data in the context of the comet, but now let's take a look at it from the point of view of the coronal mass ejection that occurs right at the very beginning of the sequence. Noah seems to think that there's a good chance that this might give us some geomagnetic activity. I'm a little sceptical, but let's wait and see. The ACE data show us that the temperature of the solar wind has not changed very much in the last 24 hours. The speed has been bouncing around a little, but between fairly narrow limits. And the density remains relatively high, which means we're still in a slow speed solar wind stream. The auroral zone seems to be more active than yesterday, which is a little odd because the KP index is actually quieted down quite a bit. I think we may be dealing with a time lag issue here. However, during the storm period of yesterday, there were some aurora, and we have a picture of one here from spaceweather.com. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at the B1 level, the sunspot number has fallen to 30, the radio sun intensity has remained constant at about 86 solar flux units. The solar wind speed hasn't changed much at 380 kilometers per second and a density of about 5 protons per cubic centimeter and geospace conditions are currently quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is there's a chance of C flares, however a very poor chance of getting either M or X flares. Sunspot number will remain low, chance of coronal mass ejections remains good, the solar wind speed will remain low and the chance of getting a major geomagnetic storm 
in the next 24 hours is poor. In the longer term, there don't seem to be any new regions due back over the limb for at least two or three days. So once again, we're going to have to rely on the emergence of new regions or growth in existing regions to give us any flaring activity. The answer to the trivial question is it's the iron tail that always points away from the sun. As the solar wind flows out radially, the ions will follow the solar wind. The dust debris will be deposited along the comet's path. So one of the origins of a meteor shower here on Earth is the Earth passing through a path of an old comet, which has left a dust trail behind it. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.